Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Virtual University and welcome to yet another reading based lesson. In this lesson, we will be reading a text together and doing exercises based on that text, which will again emphasize and improve your reading comprehension abilities. The text deals with characteristics of computers, an area that you are very familiar with, I am sure by now. Now, when you read the text, remember to try and understand the meaning of new words and expressions from the context. Don't check new words in the dictionary until you have read the whole text. Any words that you see in your text that are in boldface, you will find that they are explained in the glossary at the end of the book. I shall read a paragraph. Computers are machines designed to process electronically specially prepared pieces of information which are termed data. Handling or manipulating the information that has been given to the computer in such ways as doing calculations, adding information or making comparisons is called processing. Computers are made up of millions of electronic devices capable of sorting data or moving them at enormous speeds through complex circuits with different functions. All computers have several characteristics in common regardless of make or design. Information in the form of instructions and data is given to the machine after which the machine acts on it uh, and a result is then returned. The information presented to the machine is the input, the internal manipulative operations, the processing. This internal manipulating operations is the processing and the result the output. These three basic concepts of input, processing and output occur in almost every aspect of human life, whether at work or at play. <clears throat> For example, in clothing manufacturing, the input is the pieces of cut cloth. The processing is the sewing together of these pieces and the output is the finished garment. Look at the slide on your screen and you will find that there are three boxes. The box on the left is termed input, that is what is being fed into the computer and then the computer works on that information and it churns out the in output, right? Now, the figure that you, show, that you saw, it shows schematically the fundamental hardware components in a computer system. The centerpiece is called either the computer, the processor, or usually the central processing unit, the CPU. The term computer includes those parts of hardware in which calculations and other data manipulations are performed and the high speed internal memory in which data and calculations are stored during actual execution of programs. Attached to the CPU are the various peripheral devices such as card readers and keyboards, two common examples of input devices. When data or programs need to be saved for long periods of time, they are stored on various secondary memory devices or storage devices such as magnetic tapes or magnetic disks. Computers have often been thought of as extremely large adding machines, but this is a very narrow view of their function. Although a computer can only respond to a certain number of instructions, 
it is not a single purpose machine since these instructions can be combined in an infinite number of sequences. Therefore, a computer has no known limit on the kinds of things it can do. Its versatility is limited only by imagination of those using it. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, when electronic computers of the kind in use today were being developed, they were very expensive to own and run. Moreover, their size and reliability were such that a large number of support personnel were needed to keep the equipment operating. This has all changed now. This has all changed now that computing power has become portable, more compact and cheaper. In only a very short period of time, computers have greatly changed the way in which many kinds of work are performed. Uh, computers can remove many of the routine and boring, boring tasks from our daily lives, thereby leaving us with more time for interesting creative work. It goes without saying that computers have created whole new areas of work that did not exist before their development. Now we will uh, see if you have comprehended the passage correctly. On your screen you will see four statements. These statements relate to the main idea of the passage that you have read and I have read, right? And you decide which statement or statements, could be more than one, best express the main idea of the text. And then you have to decide why you eliminated the other choice. Statement number one. Computers have changed the way in which we live. Number one, computers have changed the way in which we live. That's statement number one. Now, is that the main idea of the text just read? Number two, all computers have an input, a processor, an output, and a storage device. Number three, computers have decreased man's workload. And number four, all computers have the same basic hardware component. Now, which one or ones out of these four are the main characteristic? Statement number one and statement number three describe the impact Statement number two and four best express the main idea of the text. Statement number two, which said all computers have an input, a processor, an output, and a storage device. This is one of the main ideas of the text. The other statement, statement number four, all computers have the base, same basic hardware components. This is also one of the main ideas. So, statement number one, uh, statement number two and four express the main idea of the text, while statement number two and three, uh, sorry, one and three, they describe the impact, the impact that computers have had on our lives. They do statements number one and three do not describe the main characteristics of the computer. These two statements, one and three, they only describe the impact. Statements number two and four are the statements that best express the main idea of the text. Now, let us see if you have comprehended 
the passage correctly. You will find a number of statements on your screen and you have to decide whether these statements are true or false by referring to the information in the text. After you've done that, when you've done that, the statements which you consider are false, make necessary uh, changes in the statement so that they become true. So you're going to do two things. Number one, you are going to decide which of these statements are true and which ones are false. And then you are going to convert the false statements by making necessary changes in the text and make them true. Statement number one, all information to be processed must be prepared in such a way that the computer will understand it. Now, is this statement true or is it false? Yes, the statement is true because the information that has to be prepared, that has to be processed, must be prepared in such a way that the computer will grasp it. Statement number two, because of the complex electronic circuitry of a computer, data can be either stored or moved about at high speeds. Now, is this statement true or false? You've had enough. You've studied computers. It shouldn't take long for you to decide. According to the text and from your knowledge of computers, this statement is true. Because the electronic circuitry of a computer, because of that, data can be either stored or moved about at high speed. So both these statements, statement number one and statement number two, were correct, were true. Statement number three, not all computers can process data given to them and produce results. Now, is this statement true or false? This statement is false. Now, how can you make this statement true? You'll have to make necessary changes in the text of that sentence. You can make it true by saying that all computers are designed to process data given to them and to produce results. The false statement said not all computers can process data. You have changed that into all computers. You have removed the negative part, not. All computers are designed to process data given to them and to produce results. They are designed in such a way that they will process data which is given to them and they will produce results. Right? It's all, it all depends on the way they have been designed. So, that was a false statement and you corrected it and made it true. Statement number four. The basic concepts of data processing are restricted to computers alone. Now, is this statement true or false? This statement is again false. How would you make it a true statement? What changes would you bring about in that sentence? You can say, the basic concepts of data processing occur in almost every aspect of human life. The basic concepts of data processing occur in almost every aspect of human life. The false statement said that basic concept of data processing are restricted to computers alone. No. <clears throat> in fact, in every aspect of human life, there is processing of data. Statement number five. The, st uh, the processor is the central component of a computer system. This statement is true. Now the next statement. Statement number six. All other devices 
used in a computer system are attached to the CPU. True or false? True. It's a true statement. Statement number seven. Memory devices are used for storing information. This statement is also true. It is a true statement. Statement number eight. Computers are very much restricted in what they can do. False. This is a false statement. How can you make this correct? How can you make it true? You can change this into computers have almost no limits to what they can do. They are restricted by the people who program them. Computers have almost no limits to what they can do. They are restricted by the people who program them. And statement number nine. Computers today cost less, are smaller and need fewer people to operate them than in the past. Is this statement true or false? If you remember correctly, if you remember the text, the text said that computers today cost less, they are smaller and they need fewer people to operate them than it was in the earlier days. So this was again a true statement. And the last statement, computers haven't changed our working conditions very much. False, because our working conditions have been changed a great deal. So, to make it true, you can change it into, computers have changed our working conditions. They have removed routine and boring tasks from our life. Very simple way, computers have, you have removed the negative aspect, computers have changed our working conditions, mind you working conditions very much, they have, what have they done? They have removed routine and boring tasks from our lives. Now, we will move on to locating information. I shall read out statements, sentences, and you locate them in the passage, in the text, where they occur, where they are expressed. All you have to do is give the paragraph a reference. The text is there on your screen. See where it says all computers are basically the same. All computers, this idea that all computers are basically the same, where does it occur in the reading passage? No? It, it occurs in paragraph 2. Now, the next statement, statement number 2. Arithmetic and or Decision making operations are performed. Where, where in the text does this occur? Quickly scan. This is a scanning exercise. You have to scan through the text. And you will find that it is there in paragraph 2. This also is in paragraph 2. Statement number 3. Computers are limited by man's imagination more than anything else. Wherein the text does this occur, this idea? Where is it expressed? Scan through the text. Um, it is paragraph 4. This idea occurs in paragraph 4. Now, statement 
Number four, all the equipment used in a computer system is the hardware. Where does this idea occur? Where is this idea expressed? Paragraph three. Scan the text quickly and you will find that it occurs in paragraph three. Now statement number five. Computers are electronic machines used for processing data. Where does this information lie? It lies in the first paragraph, right at the very beginning. It says computers are electronic machines which are used for processing data. Statement number six, if programs or data need to be kept for a long time, they are stored on tapes or disks. Come on, scan the text and you will find that this information occurs in paragraph 3. And statement number 7, first the computer accepts data. First, the computer accepts data. Where does this occur? Paragraph 2. And the last statement? Finally, new information is presented to the user. Finally, new information is presented to the user. And this as you must have guessed, is from the same paragraph from which you had the last sentence. That is paragraph 2 because the last statement started with the word first and this one, this statement also begins with the word finally. So you realize that the text is sequencing. these statements. So the first one was from paragraph 2, so this one is also from paragraph 2. Now we will look at the text again and find out what certain phrases which I shall read out and which you will see on your text in bold. What do those words refer to? This is if you remember your earlier lessons, we are making reference. We are trying to find out what these words in bold type refer to. Do you remember your uh, lesson on connectives and references? These are all exercises to help develop your comprehension of text. In paragraph 1, you will see this on the screen. In paragraph 1, look for the word which are termed data. This phrase, which are termed data. Now, in this phrase, what does which refer to? This is in paragraph 1. I am giving you the clue. It is in paragraph 1, and the word, the term, uh, the phrase which are termed data. What does which refer to? A quick glance and you will notice that which refers to pieces of information. It refers to pieces of information. Number 2. In paragraph 1, look for the phrase or moving them. Look for the phrase or moving them. And the word them you will find is highlighted. What does the word them refer to? Them refers back to something else. What does it refer to? 
it refers to data it refers to the word data number 3 in paragraph 2 look for the phrase the machine acts on it the machine acts on it and the word it in that phrase is highlighted so that means you have to find what the word it refers to the word it in paragraph 2 refers to information number 4 in paragraph 3 look for the phrase they are stored on they are stored on and the word is they what does they refer to since it's the plural it must be two things so in paragraph 3 this phrase they are stored on refers to programs and data it refers to programs and data number 5 in paragraph 4 look for this phrase it is not a single purpose machine it is not a single purpose machine and the word is it what does it refer to in paragraph 4 it refers to computer simple it refers to the word computer number 6 again in paragraph 4 look for this phrase the kinds of things it can do the kind the kinds of things it can do in paragraph 4 the word the phrase the kind of things it can do it you have to look for the word it what does it refer to it refers to again the word computer and number 7 in paragraph 4 we are still on paragraph 4 look for the phrase of those using it of those using it now what does it refer to of course the computer it refers to computer remember in in paragraph 4 the word it is being substituted for the word computer instead of writing computer 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 all the time the writer has used the word it as a substitute for the word computer number eight again in paragraph five look for the phrase they were very expensive to own they were very expensive to own and the word is they what does they refer to again using your knowledge of english because the word is they so they must be referring to two things paragraph 5 they refers to electronic computers number 9 again paragraph 5 look for the phrase moreover their size and reliability moreover their size and reliability and the word is there t h e i r what does there refer to paragraph 5 it refers to <coughs> it refers to electronic computers number 10 paragraph 6 
that did not exist. The phrase that did not exist. What does that refer to? That refers to were. Now we shall again look back at the text and find words that have similar meanings to the words given on your screen. They are small words. You have to hunt through the text and find words that are similar, synonyms. You have to find synonyms from the text. The first word, called. I will give you the clue. It is in paragraph 1. The clue where to look for that word. Paragraph 1, there is the word called. Can you think of another word which would be similar? The word is there in the text which means the same as the word called and it is in paragraph 1. Of course, it's the word termed. You, you, you have come across this word in various sentences. It is termed, meaning it is called. All right, the next word is tremendous. Look for a word which is similar in meaning to the word tremendous in paragraph 1. There is a word in paragraph 1 which has the same meaning as the word tremendous. And the word is enormous. The word ideas. Is there a word in paragraph 2 which means the same as ideas? Is there a word in paragraph 2 which means the same as ideas, a synonym for the word ideas? And the word is concept. Concepts and ideas are more or less similar in meaning. Number 4, the word react. In paragraph 4, look for a word which is similar in meaning as react. React. There is a word in paragraph 4 which means the same as react. And the word is respond. Respond and react are synonyms. Number 5, take away. The phrase take away in paragraph 6. Is there a, is there a word in paragraph 6 which can be used for the, word, for the phrase take away? And you take away something. Is there a word in paragraph 6 similar in meaning? Yes, there is. And it is the word remove. Remove means to take away. Right. Now you refer back to the text and find antonyms. Words that are opposite in meaning to the words that I shall call out. The first phrase is taken away. Give me a word from the text, paragraph 2, a word that is opposite in meaning to the phrase taken away. Last time it was synonyms, this time it is the opposite. The opposite of taken away is return. Lota diya, vapis kar diya. Take away, le gaye. Hata diya. Returned, the opposite is return. Apne use popis kar diya, lota diya. Return is the opposite of take away. And the next word is wide. Look for a word in paragraph 4 which is the opposite of wide. And the word is narrow. Number 8. In paragraph 4 there is a word which means the opposite of limited. In paragraph 4, look for a word which is the opposite in meaning to the word limited. 
and you will find the word infinite. Infinite is the opposite of limited. Limited, something that is for a short period. Infinite, for a very long time. Long, long, infinite. No end. In the same way, in paragraph 5, you will find a word which is the opposite of the word immovable. Immovable. The prefix im. Movable. It means not capable of being moved. So find a word in paragraph 5 which is the opposite of being of immovable. Meaning not capable of being moved. And that is the word portable. Portable means that which can be carried. Portable is the opposite of immovable. Something that can be carried, carried away is portable. Something that cannot be carried, it stays put in one place. You cannot move it. It is immovable. And similarly, in paragraph five, 6, the last paragraph, there is a word which is the opposite of after. Very easy word and the word is before. Now we look at words and the different forms. You have to fit them in sentences. Use the correct form, the form that would suit that sentence. Sentence, uh, the first lot, you've got the word imagination, imagine, Imagina imaginable, imaginative, and imaginary. Now, in the sentence, a computer is limited in its ability by the dash of man. Which form of the word imagine is suitable over there? And it is imagination. B. Some people are good at inventing stories. Which form of imagine? The word imagine. It is the form imaginative. Some people are good at inventing imaginative stories. In the same way, sentence number C. It is practically impossible to the speed at which computers calculate number. It is practically impossible to imagine. This is the base form of the word imagine. Imagine the speed at which a computer calculates numbers. Now, next we have six forms of the word add. Add, added, addition, additional, additional, uh, additive and use them appropriately in these sentences. Sentence A, 2A. Many terminals can be dash to a basic system if the need arises. The correct form would be many terminals can be added. A, D, D, E, D can be added. Number B, sentence B and subtraction are two basic mathematical operations. So you've got the word subtraction, it has to be addition because subtraction ends with ION. So the word that you are going to fill in the blank has to end with ION. Same forms, addition and subtraction are two basic mathematical operations. Sentence C, when buying a system, there is often no charge for the program. There is no additional. The correct form is additional. There is no additional charge for the programs. Now, number three, there are five words. Complicate, Complication, complicated, complicating, complicatedly. Now, which ones will you choose? For sentence A, 
there can be many involved in setting up a computer in an old building. Of course, it is complication, complications. There can be many complications involved in setting up a computer in an old building. The form that ends with I-O-N-S. For sentence B, 3B, it is sometimes a very process getting into a computer installation for security reasons. And the word is complicated. The form is the ED form. It is sometimes a very complicated process getting into a computer installation for security reasons. And the last one in three, in number three is, it is sometimes very complicated. It's the same form that is used here. It is sometimes very complicated to explain computer concepts. The fourth lot, it's from the word differ. These are different forms of the word differ. Differ, different, differently, differential, differentiate, difference. Six forms of the word differ. For A, you will use the word difference. There isn't a very big difference in flow charting for a program to be written in COBOL or Fortran. B. There are many different computer manufacturers today and a buyer must be able to differentiate between the, between the advantages and disadvantages of each. And sentence C. The opinions of programmers as to the best way of solving a problem often differ greatly. This is the base word. You have to use the base form. Differ. Right. And the last sentence, you have four words. The base word is rely. And from rely, you get reliably, reliable, reliability. A. Sentence A. Computers are reliable machines. B. If you don't know the meaning of a computer term, you cannot always rely on an all-purpose dictionary for the answer. Here you would have to use the preposition on, rely on an all-purpose dictionary. Number C. Computers can do mathematical operations quickly and reliably. Quickly, you've got one word ending with L-Y. There's an adverb. So the second will also be an adverb, reliably. Right? Now, we shall review the contents of the passage that you have read. Complete the following statements. You will find a word bank on your screen and try to think of a definition for each of those items in that bank. Complete the following statements with the appropriate words. You can use some of these words more than once, but make sure that you choose the correct form. That is, see that you choose a singular, a word in the singular form where singular is required and the word in the plural form where a plural is required. Right. The first sentence is information processing takes place in the processor, not in the input device or output device. Sentence number two. 
I did the first one for you. You try your hand at the second one. Which word would fill in would be best over there in number two? The hardware refers to or read the sentence first in your mind and see what word would fit in there. And it refers to all the electromagnetic devices. So it has to be the word hardware. The hardware refers to all the electromechanical devices used in a computer installation. Number three, what is used as secondary as storage devices? It is magnetic tape and magnetic disk units are used as secondary memory storage devices. And number four, a computer is usually a single purpose machine and may require quite specialized personnel to operate it and all its related equipment. Now that was one part of the content review. You are asked to fill in a table and that table summarizes the text. You will have it all in a table form. The table is divided in two parts. One part deals with the system and the second part deals with the component parts and you have to fill out the parts. Some parts have been done for you so that you know the what comes after what. Right? So with that we end today's lesson. Next time we'll move on to a more interesting exercise. Allah Hafiz, see you next time.